Hello, everyone. Uh, so in this video, we're going to uh, describe, or basically we're going to learn how to balance chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are also called chemical equations. And so we tend to use the term uh, interchange, these terms interchangeably. Uh, but anytime uh, a question asks you to balance a chemical reaction or a chemical equation, you do this exact same thing. So we'll, in this video, what we'll do is we learn from the basics. So we'll start with something very simple and then we'll keep building up as we go, okay? So let's take a look at the first uh, example out here. So let's say you have uh, a chemical reaction. So we have carbon out here and we add that to oxygen and that gives us carbon dioxide, okay? So in this reaction, what we can see is we're, we're seeing that we have one carbon out here, one and one carbon out here, and we have two oxygens out here and two out here, okay? And that's essentially what balancing a chemical reaction is. You're looking at the sum of all the elements on the left-hand side and checking if that is the exact same on the right-hand side. Now, this reaction was so simple that just the, fa the, the, the writing of the reaction itself uh, sorry, as we wrote the reaction, the reaction ends up being balanced as is. So we don't have to do anything. This one is already balanced. But let's take a look at this reaction. We have carbon plus oxygen, and that gives us CO, which is carbon monoxide. Now, in this particular case, as you can see, there are two oxygens out here, but there's only one out here. So the oxygens are definitely not balanced, but uh, the carbons appear to be balanced, okay? So the way you want to balance it, the first thing you want to do is you want to inventory, okay? So you want to inventory what's on the left and what's on the right first, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So the number of carbons on the left is one and the number of oxygen on the left is two. And then on the right-hand side, you have one carbon and then you have only one oxygen. And what you wanna do is when you match the inventory up, you can see the carbons are already balanced. So the oxygen, what you wanna do is you wanna balance the oxygen. And in order to do that, this is very important, okay? In order to do that, you have to multiply the, the one that's lesser by a coefficient. So we're gonna take two and we're gonna multiply that with what was out here to give us a net or a total of two, okay? And once we multiply it, whatever factor we multiply it, which is the two, that goes up here and it sits in front of the molecule. So basically to the left of the molecule, not a subscript, not a superscript, it is a coefficient. So that goes ahead and sits here. And when that happens, I'm gonna use a different color now. When that happens, let's go ahead and use black. Then we gotta rewrite this equation. So C plus O2, to CO. Now, we, we're, what we have to do is we have to re-inventory this, okay? So one carbon, two oxygens, and now notice carefully because of the two out here, or basically here, the carbons end up being two, and then the oxygens end up being two as well, because the two out here will balance the two oxygens, so it's multiplied with the two oxygens, so oxygen is two. Now, I, when we did all this, notice carefully, the oxygens end up being balanced, okay? The carbons are unbalanced though. And when we began this problem, the carbons were actually balanced, and that is okay. The act of balancing one element or one of the atoms can actually end up unbalancing the others, but it'll all make sense towards the end. So if you follow this process, Step by step, you'll see that at the very end, everything gets balanced out, okay? So to balance so out here, what we need to do is to balance the carbons. Again, as I mentioned before, we have to multiply by a coefficient, okay? So out here, the obvious coefficient is two. So if you multiply everything by two, that gives us a total of two carbons. And then this two will go in front of the carbon out here because we're multiplying on the left-hand side. And that gives us, let's revert back to blue, 2C plus O2 gives me 
H2CO. Now let's go ahead and inventory again to see how many of each we have on each side. So we have two carbons on the left, we have two oxygens on the left. On the right, we have two carbons, and on the right, we have two oxygens as well. And now we actually have the whole equation balanced, everything looks good, and we're all set. Hopefully that made sense. Let's take a look at a, another problem. So in this problem, what we have is we have carbon plus hydrogen, and that gives us CH4. So we have this problem. We can, just by inspection, we can see that the hydrogens are not balanced because there's actually two out here and there's four out here. Let me change that marker to a uh, red pointer. Two out here and four out here, okay? So clearly they're not balanced. So let's go ahead and inventory the left and inventory the right again. So inventorying the left, we have one carbon and then hydrogens, we have two. On the right, we have one carbon and then the hydrogens, we have four. <clears throat> The carbons are balanced, so we don't need to do anything, but the hydrogens are not. So we'll multiply the left with two to make the left equal to four, and that way the hydrogens will be balanced. And then what we'll do is we'll take that two and we'll put it right on the left, not right on the left, on the left to the left of the hydrogen, okay? So when we do that, we end up getting, and I'm gonna switch colors out here, I'll just write it down here. We end up getting carbon plus two, H2 gives us CH4. Now let's go ahead and inventory this and see what we get. So we get on the left, we have one carbon and we have actually, notice carefully, we have the two out here, but then there's the hydrogen comes in a package of two, right? So it's two times two, okay? So that gives us the total of four. And on the right, we have one carbon. Let me rewrite that properly. On the right, we have one carbon and four hydrogens. And now we can clearly see that the carbons match up, the hydrogens match up, hence that equation is completely balanced. Okay, time to check the next one, okay? So in this problem, what we have is we have basically the, the formation of water, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen, and each of them are diatomic molecules. So they come in, in combinations of two, uh, or basically they come in pairs. And uh, we'll just go ahead and inventory them again. So on the left, we have um, two hydrogens and we have two oxygens. On the right, we have two hydrogens, but only one oxygen. Now, because we have one oxygen on the right, we have to balance the oxygen. So let's go ahead and multiply these oxygens on the left with two, and that gives us a total of two oxygens. We'll take this two and we'll put it in front of the water molecule, in front of the H2O. And that's gonna give us H2 plus O2. We always have to take the time to kind of write down the equation, okay? And I know sometimes it might be just too much work, but trust me, if you follow the process step-by-step, step, it will always work out, okay? All right, so then we have two H2O. And then when, once we, we have that, then we'll just go ahead and inventory once again. So we have H, two hydrogens on the left, two oxygens on the left, because we didn't change anything on the left, right? Okay, and on the right, we have, uh, we actually have four hydrogens, so two times two, that's going to be four. And then we have two oxygens because this two is multiplied with that one oxygen, the so two. And now what we have is we, we have the oxygens balanced out, but we don't have the hydrogens balanced out. Okay. And so what we have to do is we have to kind of uh, multiply the hydrogens on the left of the equation with two to make them equal to four so we can balance them. So two times hydrogens will give me two times two, which is four. And then I'm gonna take this two and I'm gonna put it out here. And when I do that, I get two H2 plus O2 gives us two H2O. Let's go ahead and check again. Go ahead and inventory this. So we have uh, H, so on the left we have four hydrogens. Again, that's two times two, which is four. 
and then we have two oxygens. On the right, we have four hydrogens again, two times two is four, and we have two oxygens because that two times one is two. And now we see that the hydrogens and the oxygens are balanced. Therefore, we have a completely balanced um, equation. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is N2 plus H2 gives us an H3. Okay, so this is, so we'll just go ahead and inventory this again. So inventorying the left, we have two nitrogens on the left, we have two hydrogens on the left. And on the right, we have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. All right, so just remember, you can pause this and try to balance it yourself. Make sure you follow the method. And trust me, for equations that are relatively simple, it is very likely that you can follow the method. Uh, you can skip some of the steps and still get to the right answer. But what we're trying to do out here is we're trying to learn the method because this method will become really important when you're doing more complex equations where if you start skipping steps, things are not really going to work out as you wish, and then you might go wrong. So I would highly recommend to follow the method, even though it may seem a little long. OK, all right. So out here, neither is the nitrogen balanced and neither is the hydrogen balanced because the numbers don't match up. So what you have to do is let's go ahead and balance. You can choose any one of them to balance. I would recommend go, going ahead and balancing the nitrogens uh, because you have two out here and one out here. So it's very easy to see that you can just multiply one of them with two. So I'm going to multiply the right hand side with two and that's going to give me two nitrogens total. So I'm going to put that two out here and that's going to make this entire equation N2 plus H2 gives me two N H3. Let's go ahead and inventory this once again. That's going to give me, I have two nitrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the left. On the right, I have two nitrogens and now my hydrogens are going to change because it's two times the three, which is six hydrogens, okay? So once I have that, now it's very easy to see in order for me to make the left hydrogen equal to six, I just need to multiply with three. So let's go ahead and do that. So three times hydrogens, it's two times three, which is six. And then I'm gonna take that three and I'm gonna put it out here. And that's gonna give me two N, oh, I'm sorry. That's gonna give me N2 plus three H2 gives me, two and H3. Let's go ahead and inventory once again to make sure uh, we have, uh, to make sure we understand if the left and the right match up. So we have two nitrogens out here. Hydrogens are three times as two is six, okay? So we have six, sorry, wrong color. Six hydrogens on the right, again, we have two nitrogens and then we have six hydrogens and check that out. We actually have a completely balanced equation because the left matches the right. And there you have it, that is completely balanced. Let's do the next one. So consider this equation where you have phosphorus plus fluorine gives us PCL3. So again, let's inventory the left. So we have one phosphorus and we have two chlorines on the left. On the right, we have one phosphorus, but three chlorines, okay? And uh, so we don't have to balance the phosphoruses because they're already balanced, but we have to balance the chlorines. And we have uh, two chlorines on, out here and we have three chlorines. And the, the challenge for us is how do we get both those chlorines to be the same? But it turns out the best way to do that is to kind of figure out what's a common number that both of those chlorines would go into. So if you think about it, the, and one way to go about that is if you take this two and multiply it with the three, you get six, okay? And so we should aim for six chlorines on each side. And in order to do that, we can just go ahead and multiply the left with three. That's gonna give me a net of six. And we can multiply the right with two, which is gonna give me a net of six as well. So that way we can balance the chlorines. Notice carefully, what we're doing is we're multiplying the left and the right, but with different numbers, just so that we can get the chlorines to be equal to each other, okay? So this three will go up here, and then this two will go up here. 
So let's go ahead and rewrite this chemical equation with those numbers added, those coefficients that we just created. So phosphorus plus three Cl2 gives us two PCl3. Now let's go ahead and count the left and count the right again. So the atoms on the left, we have one phosphorus, but we have six chlorines on the left. And on the right, we have two phosphoruses, and we also have six chlorines. Now, as you can see, the act of balancing the chlorines ended up uh, disbalancing or unbalancing the phosphoruses, okay? So, and that would be, we can easily rebalance the phosphoruses just by multiplying the left with two and putting this two in to the left of the phosphorus. And so we have two P plus three Cl2 gives me two P Cl3, all right? Okay, so as you can see, um, this appears to be balanced right now, but let's go ahead and double check, okay? So we need to, we have two phosphoruses on the left, two P's on the left, uh, Cl, we got six on the left, on the right, we got two P's and we have six CLs. They're all balanced and we have completed balancing this equation. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, so in this problem, what we have is we have uh, one P, basically phosphorus plus oxygen gives us P4O10. Let's go ahead and count the atoms on the left. So that's one phosphorus. We have two oxygens. We have four phosphoruses on the right and 10 oxygens on the right as well. So none of them are balanced, okay? So we can just go ahead and, now you can choose what, what you wanna balance first, but let's go ahead and balance for the sake of this problem. Let's go ahead and balance uh, the phosphorus. And I just wanna mention one thing is, whether you choose to balance the phosphorus first or the oxygen first, it doesn't matter. At the end, you have completely balanced reaction should look, should be the same, okay? So if you say, hey, I wanna balance the oxygen first, that's totally fine. Go ahead and balance the oxygen first. If you did it right, at the end, your completely balanced reaction and mine should look identical. So here's a good point where maybe you can uh, pause the video and try whatever approach you want, and then we can kind of match answers at the very end, okay? All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the phosphorus. So four times P gives me four phosphoruses out here. I'm gonna put that four out to the left out here, okay? And now when I do that, I'm gonna get four P plus O2, which gives me P4 O10. Now, at this point in time, you can choose to do it one at a time. So I just chose to balance the phosphoruses first, and then I'm gonna go in the next step, balance the oxygens. I would recommend going about that since you're since we're learning and this is a new thing. But if you want to try to balance the oxygens at the same time, you can you can do that. Just make sure you manage to keep things straight in your head. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and inventory the left and the right again. So we have four phosphoruses on the left. We have two oxygens on the left. We have four phosphoruses on the right, and we have. 10 oxygens on the right, okay? Now, to balance the oxygens, all we have to do is multiply both sides with five. So five times this oxygen gives me two times five, which is 10. And I'm sorry, not both sides, balance the left side, okay? That's what I meant. I'm, I'm unsure if I said both sides or not. All right, so, so this five is gonna go up here. So that gives me four P plus five O two gives me P four O 10. And that's gonna end up giving me a total of four phosphoruses on the left, 10 oxygens on the left, four on the right of phosphorus and 10 oxygens on the right. All right, I hope that made sense. That's completely balanced. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so in this problem, as you can see, it is much more complicated than the previous examples. Um, and what we have to do is we can, we have two ways to look at this. We can approach it by first looking at each atom, each type of atom, so potassium, chlorine, TB, which is lead, nitrogen, oxygen, and so on. Or we can view this from the viewpoint of polyatomic ions, okay? 
And what I mean by that is, if you notice carefully, the NO3 is actually a polyatomic ion, okay? So if you write it just as an ion, it'd be NO3 minus, okay? So what you can do is you can, when we inventory this, just like we've been doing the previous examples, all you have to do is write out each ion. And that ion could be a monoatomic ion or it could be a polyatomic ion. Don't separate the constituents of a polyatomic ion. It'll just make things more complicated. Write out each ion, okay? Now, there's one little caveat to this method, and that is if the ion itself breaks, breaks down and changes into a different species in the reaction. In this particular case, that's not clearly happening because I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the NO3. Notice carefully how it just jumped from the lead compound. It jumped to the potassium compound, okay? So it just jumped from one compound to another, but it did not change its constituency, okay? So as a result of that, we can just treat that as one entity, okay? So when, if you do that, uh, balancing this equation is gonna become much easier, okay? So let's go ahead and write out, go ahead and inventory the left and the right. So we have one potassium on the left, we have one uh, chlorine on the left, and just a word of caution out here, or rather, if you just wanna think about it, don't worry when you're inventorying them, don't worry about writing ions with the ionic charges at this point in time. You're just trying to balance the equation. So keep the ionic charges at, away from you because that's just gonna complicate matters and it's gonna help make you second guess things. It's also gonna make the paper too busy. You don't want that. So just keep the potassium, just write it as is, write the chlorine as is, and then uh, go ahead and balance accordingly, okay? The ionic charges are not gonna make any difference, okay? All right, so we have one PB, and then for the NO3, see how we wrote the whole thing as one entity? For the NO3, we have two on the left. On the right, for potassium, we have one. We have NO3, and what I'm gonna do is, to just be able to compare, I'm gonna move this NO3 down here, so that way we can compare it in one line. So the NO3, we actually have one on the right. Chlorine, we actually have two. And PB, we actually have one on the right, okay? So for the most part, a lot of the um, elements are balanced, but the, some of them are not, okay? So, so we can start with the first one that's unbalanced. So as you can see, the chlorine is unbalanced, the potassium is balanced, so we're just gonna go with the chlorine. All right, so to balance the chlorines, again, same technique, multiply the left with two, that gives me a total of two chlorines, and then we're gonna take this two, and we're gonna put it in front of the compound that actually has the chlorine in it, okay? And when we do that, this entire equation, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Write that down here, that becomes 2KCl plus PB NO3 two times. Gives me KNO3 plus PBCl2. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and inventory it again. So that gives me two potassiums, two chlorines, lead is still one, and NO3 is still two times, two. On the right hand side, I, st I have one potassium. I do have two chlorines. My lead is one and my NO3 is one, okay? Now, again, the act of balancing the chlorines actually unbalance the potassiums, okay? And that is fine. So let's go ahead and rebalance the potassiums. So to rebalance the potassium, I'm gonna multiply this with two. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna put this two out here. Once I do that, I'm gonna get this uh, equation with two potassiums out here. Okay, so I went ahead and copied that over. And now let's go ahead and re-inventory again. So I have two potassiums on the left. I have two chlorines on the left. I have one lead on the left and I have two NO3s on the left. On the right, I have two potassiums. I have two chlorines. I have one lead and I have two NO3s. And actually now, if you notice this, you will see 
that the potassiums are balanced, the chlorines are balanced, the lead is balanced, and the NO3s are balanced. And everything is balanced. So therefore, that is a complete balanced reaction. And literally, all we did was focus on the first element that was unbalanced and then try to balance that and then go back to what was unbalanced because of that. And just that back and forth between the first two helped balance everything else in the equation, okay? So we didn't really have to even worry about balancing the NO3, okay? And this is, it's kind of worked like magic, but again, the process is important, okay? So if you kind of work the process, everything will make sense. Uh, if you get too caught up with the NO3 and start splitting up the NO3 into nitrogens and then the oxygen separately, that's going to create a lot of problems and we don't want that, okay? All right, uh, time to move on to the next one. Okay, so in this problem, here's another problem where you actually have polyatomic ions. As you can see, there's OH, which is showing up here and here, and then you have uh, SO4, which is showing up here and here, okay? So we have these polyatomic ions. Again, we're gonna keep them together, so it's gonna make our lives a lot simpler, and then we're gonna go ahead and balance them just the way we've been doing all along, okay? So my recommendation would be pause the video right now and go ahead and try to balance them. And then once we, uh, once you, uh, you know, are done, you can check your answer with what I have out here, okay? All right, so inventorying this, we have one calcium on the left, we have two OHs on the, on the left, we have two aluminums on the left, and we have three SO4s on the left. On the right, we have one calcium, we have three OHs, we have one aluminum, and we have one SO4. What's important to understand is that what I did was I made sure I lined up the same elements, uh, sorry, the same species on uh, the left and the right. Okay, and that way I, it makes me, it makes it easy for me to kind of visualize and eyeball what's happening on the left versus what's happening on the right. So that comparison becomes a lot easier. Okay, so you should try to do that as well. Okay, all right. So I have the calciums are balanced. OHs are clearly not balanced, okay? So what we can do is to balance the OHs, I'm gonna multiply the left by three. That's gonna give me a total of six. I'm gonna multiply the right with two. That's gonna give me a total of six, okay? So this three is gonna go here, and that two is gonna go here, okay? Now let's go ahead and rewrite that equation we have with those changes. So three Ca OH2 plus Al2SO4 three times. That's gonna give me CaSO4 plus two AlOH3. Okay, so once I have this out here, let's go ahead and count again. So on the left, now I have three calciums. I have six OHs. The aluminum's never changed, so that's still two. And the SO4 is still three, okay? On the right, I have one calcium. My OHs are six. My aluminums, because of the two that went here, that ended up becoming two. And my SO4 is one, okay? So once I have that figured out, notice carefully, the act of doing this actually balanced the OHs as well as the aluminums. Now I just have to kind of figure out the rest from here, okay? So let's go ahead and try to balance the calciums next. Okay, you can go from the top to the bottom, okay? You don't have to like, you know, jump around. You could if you wanted to, you could try balancing the SO4s if you wanted to, but we'll just go ahead and go from the top to the bottom so we're, we're, we stay organized, okay? So we have three calciums out here and one out here, okay? So we just multiply this with three, gonna give us a total of three, and this three will go here. When we do that, now this becomes three CaOH twice plus Al2 SO4 three times. That gives me three CaSO4 plus two AlOH3, okay? Once we have that, let's go ahead and count them all again. 
So we have three calciums, we have two OHs, we have two ALs, and we have three SO4s, okay? Now out here on the right, we have three calciums, the OHs, oh, I'm sorry. Um, this OH should have been six OHs, not two. So that's six, and this OH should be six as well. The aluminums on the right-hand side should be two. And then the SO4s, because of the three that went up there, that actually makes that three SO4s. Now see if we compare this, calciums are balanced, the OH is a balanced, the aluminums and the SO4s are balanced. Everything is balanced, therefore we have a complete balanced equation, all right? Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you try this problem and then now you compare it with me and you can see if you're on the right track or not. If you follow the process, sometimes the process may be tedious, it may look tedious, it might take a few extra minutes, but trust me, slow and steady wins the race, okay? So you always wanna follow the method and you'll be fine, okay? All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so in this next type of problem, what we have out here is we have a CH4 plus oxygen gives us CO2 and H2O. Now this kind of a reaction actually is called a combustion reaction, okay? I'll just write that down out here. Combustion reaction, okay? And combustion reactions can be recognized by understanding that you have a hydrocarbon, which is basically a compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and sometimes it contains oxygen. And that compound uh, reacts with oxygen. Oxygen is always one of the reactants, okay, in a combustion reaction. And the products are always going to be carbon dioxide and water, okay? And the reason uh, I'm mentioning this is because for two things. Number one is oftentimes you'll find, you'll get questions that will talk about combustion reactions. Assuming that you know what a combustion reaction is and how to recognize it. In this particular uh, example, I just thought it might be worthwhile to share how to recognize a combustion reaction real quickly. So what you wanna do is look for oxygen on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, look for carbon dioxide and water. The second you see those, know it's a combustion reaction you're dealing with, that's number one. Coming back to balancing chemical reactions. So when you balance a combustion reaction, the key thing to remember is you do everything that we learned before with the exception of you save the oxygen for the very end, okay? So don't balance the oxygen till the very end, okay? So let's go ahead and follow the steps and I'll remind you to balance the oxygen at the very end. So on the left, we have one carbon and four hydrogens and two oxygens. On the right, we have one carbon, we have two hydrogens and notice carefully we have two plus one, that's three oxygens, okay? So the carbons are balanced, so nothing to do out there, but the hydrogens are not. So let's go ahead and balance the hydrogens on the right. So two times H uh, gives me two times two, which is four. So this two out here is gonna go up here. So that gives me CH4 plus O2, gives me CO2 plus two H2O. All right, so I have, this balance, uh, the hydrogen's balance. Let's go ahead and count again. So on the left, nothing really changed on the left. On the right, the carbons did not change, but now the hydrogens changed. So now I'm, I have four hydrogens, and then the oxygens, I actually, as a result of this balancing, out here, the oxygens actually ended up getting multiplied with two. So I have two oxygens, out here, and then I have another two out here. So that gives me a total of four, okay? But once I have those oxygens lined up, so now notice carefully, the carbons are balanced, the hydrogens are balanced. And what's remaining is the oxygen. Remember we mentioned, we're gonna keep the oxygen for the very end in a combustion reaction, okay? So go ahead and multiply the left with two. That gives me a total of four. This two can go here. So now I have CH4 plus 2O2 gives me CO2 plus 2H2O. Let's go ahead and confirm if it's truly balanced by counting the left and the right. So one carbon, four hydrogens on the left, and four oxygens on the left. 
On the right, I have one carbon, four hydrogens, and the oxygens are two plus two, that is four. They're balanced. You have a complete balanced uh, combustion reaction. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. All right. So in this one, what we have is we have C2H6 reacting with oxygen, giving us carbon dioxide and water. If we count the carbons on the left, we have two, six hydrogens on the left, and two oxygens on the left. On the right, we have one carbon, we have two hydrogens, and then we have two plus one, three oxygens on the right. Remember, we're going to save the oxygen for the very end, okay? So first, we balance the carbons. So multiply the right carbons with two to get them equal to each other. That's going to give us the 286 plus O2 gives me 2CO2 plus H2O, okay? And then let's go ahead and recount. Two carbons, hydrogens is six, oxygens is two. Nothing really changed on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, we have, um, sorry. On the right-hand side, we have two carbons, we have two hydrogens, and then the oxygens are two times two, that's four plus one, five. Okay, so the oxygens changed, the hydrogens uh, did not change, okay? So now, we have the carbons balanced. Let's go ahead and balance the hydrogens next. So to do that, we just multiply with three. That's gonna get both sides to have six hydrogens. And we're gonna put that three right here. When that happens, we end up getting C286 plus O2 gives us two CO2 plus three H2O, okay? Let's go ahead and count again. So we have two carbons. We have six hydrogens. We have two oxygens on the left, nothing changed. On the right, we have two carbons. We actually have six hydrogens now, okay? And oxygens are going to be three oxygens out here and two times two is four. So three plus four, that's seven oxygens. Okay, so we, we have this balanced, we have this balanced, okay? We have to balance the oxygens. So what you wanna do is try to find a number that you can look for, look at the oxygen, which uh, look at the side which has the lesser number of oxygens, which is going to be this side, okay? And find a number that you can multiply this with to get the oxygens equal to the seven, which is on the right hand side, okay? So that's going to be 3.5, okay? So two times 3.5, which is, gives me seven, okay? I'm going to take that 3.5. Now, at this point in time, you might be wondering why did we take a decimal number, okay? Well, that's to, it's totally fine to take a decimal number because at the end, we will change the decimal to a whole number. Right now, we're just trying to get the number of atoms to be the same, and it's totally fine to take the decimal number if we need to, to balance, to, to make sure that we get a balanced reaction. So when we do that, we get C286 plus 3.5O2 gives us 2CO2 plus 3H2O. As I mentioned before, we have the 3.5 out here. That is, that 3.5 is a decimal, and we don't want that in the final equation. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what can we multiply the 3.5 with to make it a whole number. And in this particular case, you will multiply with 2. But because we multiply the 3.5 with 2, we have to multiply the whole equation with 2 to make sure that everything else remains balanced. Okay, so that's the secret. So I'm going to just multiply the whole equation with two. And when I do that, I get two times C286 plus seven times O2 gives us four CO2 plus two times three, six H2O. Now we'll do a last count to make sure we everything looks balanced and good. So on the left now we have four carbons because two times two is four. We have two and six, two times six is 12 hydrogens. And for oxygens, we have seven times two, that is uh, 14 oxygens, okay? On the right-hand side, we have four carbons. We have 12 hydrogens because of the six times two is 12. And for the oxygens, 
we have four times two, that's eight, plus another six. Okay, so eight plus six is 14. As you can see, we all of them are balanced and everything looks good. So therefore this entire equation is balanced, okay? And if you just compare this equation, look at where we began. We began with something that looked like this, okay? And then we ended up with something that looked like this. And as you can see, um, we followed the method that was very precise. We went step by step and we ended up with an equation fully balanced. When you start with something, if you don't follow the method, it's very likely that you might go wrong in this kind of a uh, combustion reaction where there's a lot of different coefficients, uh, you know, trying to play a role out here that have to be inserted and you have to understand the methods very carefully to be able to basically uh, end up with a fully balanced uh, reaction, which is correct, by the way. All right, let's do another one, okay? So this one, um, feel free to pause the video, try it yourself, and then unpause and see where, where we are. All right, so we have another combustion reaction out here. Let's go ahead and count the left. So three carbons on the left, seven hydrogens on the left, and two oxygen on the left. On the right, we have one carbon, we have two hydrogens, and we have two plus one, three oxygens, okay? So let's go ahead and balance the carbons first, okay? So the right, if we balance it, we have to add a coefficient of three out here. That gives me C387 plus O2, gives me three CO2 plus H2O. And let's go ahead and um, re, uh, recount. Now we did nothing to the left, so the left I'm just gonna copy this and put it down here as is. The right is gonna change. So the carbons become three, the hydrogens are still, still two, and the oxygens will change. Now that's three times two is six plus one seven. All right, now let's balance the hydrogens, okay? So to balance the hydrogens, we're just, one way to do it is we can um, go ahead and multiply this with 3.5, okay? My recommendation would be just multiply this with seven and then this with two. And that way what happens is we won't have to worry about getting rid of the decimal later on. Now, word of caution out here. You can only do the seven and the two, multiply with the whole number, only do that when you're looking at an element which only appears once on each side. And what I mean by that is hydrogen only appears in one of the compounds on each side. So it appears once out here and once out here, okay? Now, in the previous example, when we were uh, trying to uh, balance the oxygens at the very end, and I'll kind of go back out here to talk about it, and we were trying to balance the oxygens, notice carefully, the oxygens appear once out here, but twice out here, okay? And as a result of that, you cannot go ahead and try to multiply two with seven and um, this, this seven with, uh, with two to balance the oxygens because while out here, you wouldn't have a problem out here, now you'd have to figure out how you're gonna divvy up the 14 that you're gonna get between this and this. That would be an additional challenge. So when you have, the, the In summary, when you have an element that appears once on one side and more than once on the other side, you wanna basically keep one of the sides constant and multiply the side that where it only appears once with a certain decimal number to be able to get it to be the same, okay? And that will make things a lot easier. And again, I could keep talking about this, but the point, you'll only understand this if you do many problems like this, okay? As I keep saying, chemistry is not a spectator sport. You just have to kind of do it and then you learn it, okay? All right, so out here, I'm gonna multiply, I'm sorry, we were doing the hydrogens. So that gives me two hydrogens out here. So I'm gonna put that two out there. And then out here, because I multiplied with seven out here, I'm gonna put the seven out here and I'm gonna plonk that down there. 
That gives me a total of uh, a new equation, 2C387 plus O2 gives me 3CO2 plus 7H2O, okay? So I have, now I'm gonna go ahead and count again. So that's gonna give me, uh, I have six carbons on the left. I have 14 hydrogens on the left and I have two oxygens on the left. On the right, I have three carbons. I have 14 hydrogens and my oxygens are three twos are six plus another seven. So that's 13 oxygens, okay? So when I finished all that, now see the hydrogens are balanced, but then the, car the uh, carbons are not. So let's go ahead and balance the carbons. Multiply it with two, okay? And when I multiply the two, then I got to like, instead of putting the two out here, I got to multiply this with two, okay? So that's going to give me 2C3H7 plus O2, give me 6CO2 plus 7H2O, okay? Now let's go ahead and count again. Nothing changed on the left, so I'm just going to copy this down here. On the right, I have six carbons. I have 14 hydrogens still, okay? And the oxygens change, so six times two is 12, plus another seven, that brings me to a total to, uh, the total to 19, okay? At this point in time, I have the carbons balanced, I have the hydrogens balanced, I just have to balance the oxygens, okay? So to do that, as I mentioned before, because the oxygen appears once out here and twice out here, I'm gonna multiply the oxygen on the left with a decimal number to bring the total equal to 19. So that's two times, uh, should be 9.5. And that 9.5 will go here. When that happens, I get 2C387 plus 9.502 gives me 6CO2 plus 7H2O, okay? and when I do that, let's go ahead and count again. So on the left, I have six carbons. I have 14 hydrogens. And I have 9.5 times two, that's 19 oxygens. The right does not change because I only multiplied things on the left. So I'm just gonna put that down here. And that's completely balanced. And the last step out here is we have to get rid of the decimal. So to get rid of that, we multiply the whole equation with two. And that's gonna give me 4C387 plus 19O2 is me 2612CO2 plus 14H2O, okay? And now let's confirm that we have the right answer out here. So let's go ahead and count everything on the left and match it up with what's on the right. So carbons are 12 on the left, four times three is 12. Hydrogens on the left is going to be seven times four is 28. And oxygens on the left is 19 times two is 38. On the right, I have 12 carbons. I have 14 times two, that's 28 hydrogens and I have Oxygens are going to be 12 times two is 24 plus another 14 oxygen. So 24 plus 14 is 38. There you go. They all match up and that's completely balanced. So there you have it, a completely balanced uh, reaction, okay? And as you can notice, we have to take the time to split the reaction up and go about the steps one at a time, strategically, one step at a time, okay? And only once we do that, we'll get to the right answer, okay? There are some of you who could probably skip steps, but I would highly recommend not to because that just creates more of an opportunity to get something incorrect, okay? I hope that made sense. This kind of wraps up our video on balancing chemical reactions. Uh, of course, practice is key. So make sure you practice as many different problems as you can. But these are the foundations. These are the basic concepts of balancing chemical reactions. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.